We're on the June 2010 exam, page 12. We're into part B2. And you're supposed to record your answers uh, in an answer booklet. I don't have a copy of the answer booklet here, so I'm going to just do the work here. Keep in mind, for these sections, showing your work ends up being important. Question 51 through 53 are based on this. A machine fired several projectiles at the same angle above the horizontal. So we are launching projectiles at some angle theta. The graph represents the relationship between the magnitude of the initial vertical velocity, velocity in the y-axis, and the magnitude of the corresponding velocity, or the velocity that comes out of the machine. So we have uh, a problem where uh, a tennis ball launcher or something like that is shooting balls or shooting projectiles at some velocity, which is the initial velocity. And this graph is giving us the initial vertical velocity, or the velocity in the y-axis. So if we do a vector analysis, here's the velocity v, and it's giving us the velocity in the y-axis off the graph. Question 51. Determine the magnitude of the initial vertical velocity when the magnitude of its velocity is 40 meters per second. And this is worth one point, so it's a simple read off the graph. At 40 meters per second, the correct answer would be about 25 meters per second. So I'm going to say uh, the answer to this question was 25 meters per second. Determine the angle above the horizontal at which the projectiles were fired. Well, now see, problem 51 gives you some information. You know, the velocity is equal to 40 meters per second, and velocity y is equal to 25 meters per second. We got that from the graph. So if we go to our formula sheet, we find that any vector's y component is equal to that vector times the sine of the angle. So we know the vector's y component. We know the vector. So we can say velocity y is equal to velocity times the sine of the angle. Divide both sides by velocity. gets the sine of the angle by itself. We take the inverse sine. I'm going to put it over here. And that gives us the angle. So it's going to be 25 meters per second divided by 40 meters per second. And then take the inverse sine of that. So we say 25 divided by 40 is equal to 0 .65, uh, 625. And that's the sine of our angle. So if we take second function sine, that should give us our angle. And I'm getting uh, about 38.6 degrees. It wants me to calculate the magnitude of the initial horizontal velocity of the projectile when the magnitude of its initial velocity is 40 meters per second. Show all work, including the equation and substitution with units. So let's do this. Now I'm going to place my answer in this space here. Obviously on your answer sheet there would be a special space for that. The first thing I'm going to do is list my knowns. My velocity is equal to 40 meters per second. I can use my angle that I calculated of 38.6 degrees. But I also know from my graph that my velocity in the y-axis is equal to 25 meters per second. And I'm looking for my velocity in the x-axis. So the first thing I do is I list my knowns. And now I want to go find an equation. And I have two I can choose from. I can say velocity x equals velocity cosine theta. This formula tells me any vector's x component is equal to any vector times the cosine of the angle. So I could say any vector's x is equal to any vector cosine theta. Velocity x equals velocity cosine theta. And I can solve for my velocity x uh, by plugging in. Don't forget to plug in with units. So that would be a 40 meters per second times the cosine of 38.6 degrees. 
Now I have that number, I kept it on my calculator, so I'm just going to hit the cosine button, multiply it by 40, and I come up with about 31 meters per second. Now I could do it a second way. I know that if I have any velocity vector, I can break it into its x component and its y component, but I could draw the y component over here. That's the beauty of vectors, and I build myself a right triangle. So uh, I can say this is the hypotenuse, and this is the opposite side and the adjacent side of some angle. Now I had to calculate this angle. What if I made a mistake in my calculations? My velocity was given to me of 40 meters per second, and my velocity in the y-axis, I kind of looked up on the graph at 25 meters per second. So even if I made a mistake with my angle, I'm still pretty confident of these two numbers. So I could just use Pythagorean where it tells me that uh, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, which means uh, a squared is equal to uh, uh, c squared minus b squared, and a would be equal to the square root of c squared minus b squared. So that would be the square root of 40 meters per second squared minus 25 meters per second squared. So I plug that into the calculator, and I can say that, uh, and again, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to squeeze it down here, that A is equal to the square root of uh, 975. And if I hit my square root button, I come up with uh, 31 meters per second. I found it two different ways. I get the same answer, so I'm pretty confident I got the right answer there. And that was question 53 for two points. A point for listing my knowns, the formula, and plugging in with units, and a point for the correct answer. If you don't put your units in this equation, or you don't put your units in this equation, you don't get that second point. Question 54. A student makes a simple pendulum by attaching a mass to the free end of a 1.5 meter length string. You put a mass here, attach it up there, you got yourself a pendulum. She pulls the mass to her chin. So uh, here she is. And she pulls the mass up to her chin and, uh, and releases it uh, from rest. And the pendulum swings along the curved path comes back and it just comes but doesn't hit her chin. Her classmates are surprised the mass doesn't reach her chin because apparently they never saw this before. And she didn't move, which is good. Explain why the mass does not have enough energy to return to its starting position and hit the girl on the chin. And we want to use complete sentences. And there's a couple of things you could say. A complete sentence might be a friction. A period at the end of it, capital, friction does it. Basically it has potential energy at the beginning. That potential energy changes to kinetic energy, but it doesn't gain any energy. As a matter of fact, it loses whatever potential energy it had, turns into kinetic. That kinetic energy turns back into potential as the pendulum swings over here. But if you put pretend numbers, 10 joules of potential turns into 10 joules of kinetic turns back into 10 joules of potential. Potential is uh, equal to m times g times h. m and g are going to be constant throughout this experiment. So it goes to the same height that it had over here, but no higher. That uh, then swings back here, changes to kinetic, which changes back into potential. So even without friction, it could never get any higher than the original starting point. It had a certain amount of energy. Uh, that would be called conservation of energy. So any kind of an explanation that includes uh, friction and or conservation of energy, total energy of a system can't change, uh, anything like that would be an acceptable answer for 54 as long as your um, physics was good. And used to be real uh, picky about complete sentences and that included a period at the end and it starts with a capital.